Ready. Aim. Fire. Those who wish may be seated at this time. In the uh, Jewish tradition, we have an obligation for those who are here to witness uh, your mother, grandmother, and friend to be fully placed in her grave. That will be done at this time. must answer the summons to return to the source of being. 
Will we lose our hold on life when our time has come? As the leaf falls from the branch when the day is done, the deeds of the righteous enrich us all, and then the, as the fallen leaf enriches the earth below. The dust returns to the earth, the spirit lives on. Like the stars by day, our beloved gleam are not seen, are dead by mortal eyes. They shine on forever. Theirs is an eternal peace. Let us be thankful for the companionship that continues in a love stronger than death. Sanctifying the name of God, we honor the memory of Helene Weinberger. The dust returns to the earth as it was, the spirit returns to God in heaven. It is only the house of the spirit which we now lay within the earth. The spirit itself cannot die. Receive her mercy, O God, the soul I departed to leave. Grant her that everlasting peace which you have prepared for us in the world to come. Though no human eye has seen nor ear has heard, the mind has grasped it. Still it is our sure inheritance and our everlasting peace. O God, help us to understand that grief and love go hand in hand. Now the pain which loss inflicts is a measure of a love stronger than death. Though we cry in the anguish of our hearts, may we be like children who know that their parent is near and who cling unafraid to the trusted hand. In this spirit, O oh God, do we commit all that is precious to your keeping. For everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to discard, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. In the rising of the sun and its going down, we will remember her. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, in the opening of buds and the rebirth of spring, we will remember her lean. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, in the beginning of the year when it ends, we will remember her. When we are weary and in need of strength, when we are lost and sick at heart, we will remember her lean. When we have joys we yearn to share, we'll remember her. So long as we live, she too shall live. For she will always be part of us as we remember her. And now I'll call upon her granddaughter, Allison. You can go ahead. Yeah. That's right. Well, she's coming up. I said, we're the Joint Spectrum and Zonda Guard with Cuyahoga County. It's truly our honor to be here today. We've been doing this for 19 years. This is the best picture ever of a veteran. That's the one that we were sent, and that's the one we used. She helped build bombs back in 19 in the 40s. She's in the US Army Air Force. read online that eulogies are supposed to range between two and ten minutes. I believe we could all spend the rest of our lives speaking of her, and still it would not be enough. Helene Frances Minda Weinberger 
lived many lifetimes in one, and none of those was typical nor easy, but she found joy in all of it somehow or another. I am the first grandchild by eight years, which gave me an abundance of special time with my gram. I listened earnestly to her stories, even when it was the 27th time I had heard that story. I learned early on how she lost her mother at age seven to an automobile accident. I learned of her many painful, traumatic, and often primitive ear surgeries as a young girl. I learned of her youth spent in a French-speaking convent, the language which would stay with her forever. She told me funny stories, like how she painted the frames of her glasses with green nail polish to match her green fingernails and a very green outfit as a new Jewish co-ed at Westminster Choir College, and how that garnered the not so positive attention of her future husband. He sought her out to scold her for making the few Jews at that school look foolish by association and fell in love instead. <laughs> she shared with us her adventures of bravery as a corporal overseas serving her country during the Second World War. She glowed with pride as she spoke of Grandpa's beautiful singing voice. Graham told of the struggles of being a young married woman to a man with big ideas and little caution. She told me her stories of great losses as well, like being on the phone with a family friend while Grandpa sped to the friend's house only for her to hear the man take his own life over the phone before Grandpa could get to him or Graham could change his mind. She was at times unwittingly fearless. She was a businesswoman breaking the glass ceiling for women to follow her by achieving her CLU and CPCU in a male-dominated industry. She was the mother of two wild boys, David and Barrett, who got into trouble or got horribly injured or took scary risks, sometimes all at once. She hadn't really had a mother to teach her how to be one, but she knew how to love. Graham was a lifelong volunteer, whether at the Job Corps as a tutor or during every presidential election for the Democratic candidates' campaigns, or how she spent nearly every day for 13 years at her husband's side at Menorah Park, sneaking in ham and cheese sandwiches for him because she was fiercely and unapologetically rebellious. She was a grandmother to four of us, Joseph, Emily, and Benjamin, my brother. Her love was unflinching. She made chip chocolate cookies for us and peach preserves and Aunt Ruth candy and chocolate orange oatmeal bars, always with a song in her heart, absently humming tuneless melodies and smearing ingredients on her glasses. <laughs> She made and maintained lifelong friendships with people she met all over the world, and most of whom she outlived. She kept in touch through letters, phone calls, visits, and then emails, which were always typed with random but plentiful shouty capital letters and misplaced <laughs> punctuation. Graham couldn't walk in a straight line if her life depended on it. Walking behind her down the hallways at her apartment building was like watching a child's bowling ball make its way down the lane, bouncing back and forth off the bumpers. She had a permanent bruise on her shin from repeatedly walking into the open dishwasher, every time scolding herself under her breath while chuckling, calling herself a dumb broad. She took us on great adventures all over the world, 
she wore silly sun hats those gigantic oversized sunglasses over her regular glasses fanny packs and passport holders at restaurants she sat with her purse in her lap always catching the crumbs of the meal she always had a tissue in her hand and like every good jewish grandma a stash of individually wrapped hard candies in her purse in case she started to cough Graham couldn't begin a phone call with a normal greeting. It always began mid-sentence and went on for quite a while before the person on the receiving end of the line could get a word in. When driving her home from one of our outings, she would frantically dig through her purse for her apartment keys while we were still a mile away from her apartment. So she wouldn't have to make us wait once she arrived. I can picture her now sitting beside me in the car with her exact door key in her hand pointed outward at the ready for the remaining five minutes of the car ride. When she moved in with my family after grandpa had the stroke, she and I shared a Jack and Jill bathroom wherein she would take it upon herself to loudly slam the cupboards and the glass shower door to make sure I wasn't oversleeping for school. Graham used frequent funny little phrases that no one had really ever heard of before. Like she had to go put on her face, meaning her makeup. Or when something dropped, she shouted, down went McGillicuddy. <laughs> she was absolutely incapable of pronouncing any Americanized French word without the flourish of a heavy and perfect French accent. A croissant at a bakery was always a croissant. <laughs> and someone named Danielle was Danielle. <laughs> Through every difficulty or tragedy though, she'd aggressively wipe the tears from her eyes with one hand and proclaim onward and upward with sincere conviction. Her energy was unmatched by those half her age. She practically sprinted, albeit zigzaggedly, everywhere she went, as though she was a child being told not to run in the halls at school and barely being able to contain the excitement of getting to the playground. Graham was a great grandmother to my children, Stella and Hugo. She spent time, her precious time with them, recounting some of the same stories I heard as a child. They both adored her and our Sunday breakfasts together. Many of us here in Cleveland were devastated when she moved to Arizona a year and a half ago. And my Stella was one of those that felt that loss deeply. Helene Weinberger was a lot of things. And I think above all else, she was love. Personification of love for her family, friends, strangers, her beloved pets over the years, art, writing, music, literature, gaudy jewelry, being of service to others, her country, travel, connection, and feeling useful. Graham spoke French until her last days. Her favorite book was Le Petit Prince, the Little Prince. The character of the Rose in that story was significant because of how much time and effort the Little Prince invested in caring for her, embodying the Fox's statement that love comes from investing in others. And isn't that just exactly who she was? My brother Benjamin couldn't be here asked me to share 
from the book. Quote, if I try to describe the little prince here, it is to make sure that I shall not forget him. To forget a friend is sad. Not everyone has had a friend. And if I forget him, I may become like the grown-ups, unquote. Benjamin added to that, I'll never forget you, Helene, but I will miss my friend dearly. The passage from the book, The Little Prince, that spoke most to me is, quote, And when your sorrow is comforted, time soothes all sorrows. You will be content that you have known me, unquote. I am honored and humbled beyond measure to have known and been loved unconditionally by you, Graham. 96 years is a long life and still not enough for us. We miss you. We love you. We are better for having known you. I know we all wish we could have been by your side, your small hand wrapped in ours, offering our comfort, as you have done for all of us here and countless others. There are family members and friends who wanted to be here to honor you today, but COVID has changed the way we mourn. My dear sweet Graham, I hope you are with your mother now and all others who have gone before you. And I pray you have found peace you so richly deserve. I love you forever. Birth is a beginning and death a destination, but life is a journey, a going, a growing from stage to stage, from childhood to maturity and youth to age, from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion and perhaps to wisdom, from weakness to strength or strength to weakness and often back again, from health to sickness and back we pray to health again. From offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion, and grief and understanding, from fear to faith. From defeat to defeat to defeat until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but in having made the journey stage by stage a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning and death a destination, but life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage made stage by stage, from birth to death to life everlasting. I ask those who are able to, to arise for the El Malay Rachamim. This is one of the two concluding prayers. The El Malay Rachamim is a prayer that asks God to quickly receive her soul in the Jewish belief. When we are buried, our soul begins its journey back to God. All souls return to God, and this prayer asks that God accepts her soul quickly. El Malay Rachamim Shochem Ramamim Hamse Menucha Naha Taha Kamfe Hashkina. In Kodashim Hurvim Kazar Harakia Mizrim Es Nishma Shalim Weinberger. Shalach Leomo. Vial Harachamim Esterei Hupe Cesar Kanafo Leolomim. I swear, Bissar Hachaim is Nishmato Adonai, who not a little. You know, if Bishalom Amish Kabag and Amar, Amen.
Compassion to God, eternal spirit of the universe. Grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Helene Weinberger, who is at her eternity. O God of mercy, let her find refuge in your eternal presence, in the shadow of your wings, and let her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is her inheritance, and may she rest in peace. And let us say, Amen. The final prayer we say is the prayer entitled The Mourner's Kaddish. It's a prayer that doesn't speak about death. Talks about life, which is the most important thing in Judaism. Yisgadal vi yisgadash shemei rabah, vi alma di rachi rusei vi amlik machusei, v'chay echol nevil mechol v'chay dechol beis Yisrael, v'agolav v'zman kari v'imru hamein, v'hei shemei rabah mevarach le'olam olamei amaya, yisbarach v'yishtabach v'yisbarach v'yisramam v'yisnasei, is a darvi is a levi is a law shame to kudisha for a who a la min call rehasa vishigrasa to shuhasa nakamasa dami rambi alma vimi rame a shlama rabba min shamai the haim alenu be al kai israel vimi rame sashalom be mama who ya sashalom alenu be al kai israel vimi rame i'm gonna go in the place of mirth upon her ask it after I'm done anyone who wishes may also come and perform that spiritual ritual it's a symbolic ritual that we actually helped in her burial Lake Tishalach Adonai go your way for God have called you Lake Adonai Yenecha go thy way may God be with you may your righteousness go before you and the glory of God receive you. I grant you that everlasting peace. Amen. Now I invite anyone who wishes to come and place earth upon the grave. If anyone wants to come around this way, it's probably a little muddy. You can come right to the 